Hi, welcome to a special edition of the Alan Rosenberg Show. When I got home from work today, there was a huge package here. And it was a gift from one of uh, our viewers' subscribers. And then the other day, I got a different gift from a different subscriber. And I've gotten other gifts in the past. I'm wearing this shirt. This was from Steve Harold. And then Tom, who actually helps out with my channel, giving me some, some uh ideas like my first albums and how I got into bands he has sent me some CDs over time you know a golden earring and trying to turn me on to music that I don't really know um, and I, I just feel so lucky and what I want to do is I just want to give a really big thank you to everybody um, a quick background you know I, I've told people I started my database when I was 10 years old in 1973 and I don't think a lot of people believe me, but one thing you will learn about me is I never exaggerate. Everything I do is honest, there's no scripting, and it's pure passion. This is my files from the original type lists that I did starting when I was 10 years old. I did this because my sister, who's four years older, she used to do it, and I was like, well, how cool is that? So I would type up at the end of each year the albums that I got that year. Here's uh, 1981. This is an actual type list from 1981. I used to use two fingers on a little typewriter, and I kept them. And yeah, I started doing this when I was 10 years old in 1973. So I knew all the albums I had, and then eventually when I computerized, I put it all on a computer, and that's how I know, you know every album I have and when I got it. Uh, and I think that's pretty unique. In fact, I don't know if there's any other channels that have anything like this. But uh, So there's no exaggeration. It's really cool. I mean, here's another one if you just want to see. Here's 1983. And, you know, it shows what I got that year or the albums I had. And it's pretty thick. And I, even then, I was a pretty big fan of the Stones right there. So... Um, I started really, really young. Then when I was in high school, I actually had my own magazine. Uh, and it was called uh, Alan's Musical Box. And I used to write articles for the high school local papers. I went to Farmingdale High School. So the Dale News, I wrote stories for that. And then I decided to create uh, my own magazine with help from friends. And I had wonderful teachers. And it was started off as a a feature in a thing called Friday, and I still have all of these things. Uh, friend Sandy, here was the first music box by Alan Rosenberg. They were mimeographed, and used to give them out. Uh, my friend Sandy used to do the artwork. There's another one, and I got a ton of these. I know it's only rock and roll, but I like it. Al's music box, and what was in here? Well, I used to do album reviews and. Talking about people, here's a experiences, Melanie, and I wrote all about Melanie. So I've been talking and writing about music really my whole life on a very small scale. And then when I joined Facebook, whenever the hell that was, I started writing stories on Facebook. And it was then that family and friends started saying, you know, you really should do a YouTube channel. And I was weary about it because I know the internet could be vicious and whatever you call those people, trolls. But I am now doing my channel for in four years. Uh, it's a small channel. Uh, what do I have? Uh, 22,600 subscribers, 382 videos. Small channel, but quality channel. I hope you agree. I think that the material we do is top notch. But more importantly, is that when you look at my videos, I get a lot of the same people over and over again and more people joining. And that's what I always hoped. These are just my opinions, and I just want to honestly and emotionally and passionately share my love, my passion for music that's real, going back to when I was 10 years old. And I showed pictures in another video, a little kid playing 45s on a, a little thing. It's something weird about me with music. Uh, that's always been there. And I'm a drummer. I started playing the drums very young. But the idea of, of creating a community 
that's quality of people that we could share our views and turn each other on and disagree respectfully or agree respectfully is a wonderful thing. And we have that in this little Alan Rosenberg Show channel. It's my name, but it is a little community. And uh, it just makes me feel good, you know. Uh, you know, uh, what's that Harry Chapin song, Mr. Tanner? I was just listening to the album yesterday on 8-Track. Uh, music, music was his life, but it wasn't his livelihood. And that that's me, you know. I, I have a job, a retail job. But my passion is music and talking about it and sharing it. So this is a big, big thank you to all of you for supporting the channel and contributing and helping it to grow slowly. And maybe it'll keep growing. That would be wonderful, you know. Um, but we will see what happens. Now, I did get two gifts this week. And this is awkward because... I, I want to show the gifts and I want to acknowledge, you know, because the thought that somebody, first of all, the fact that you take your time to watch me and contribute is wonderful, is more than I hoped um, would happen. But the fact that on occasion I'll, I'll get a gift is just blows me away. I do, I don't do this for money. I don't make any money on this channel. I, I just do it for the love um, and I don't expect any gifts. So, I don't want anybody to feel awkward like, oh, I watch a channel and I don't send them anything. That's not what this is about. So please, please don't don't take it that way. But I, I just want to share the channel that, you know, I thought this was amazing. So um, this is from Martin. You would recognize him on the channel from his comments. And he lives in Surrey, England. I know that from Rolling Stones lore. And he sent me some really cool things. But I love what he also did. And he, he sent me a letter describing partially of what he sent. Because he is from England, obviously. And he talks about Croydon and Fairfield Hall and the Greyhound. And this stuff is, is really cool for me because I have hundreds of live albums. And I'm a live album fan. So I recognize the name, Croydon Fairfield Hall. Wish Bone Ash Records recorded there and Genesis and things like that. And he's telling me his personal story, shows that he saw. And in fact, he sent me this. This is so cool. This is from July through December of 72. And people that played Genesis and Status Quo, Status Quo, um, you know, and then you'll see them playing over and over again. There's Genesis in September. And then Genesis again later on. And there at the bottom, you're going to see Wishbone Ash right there on December 17th. So, and status quo. And you can just see that the bands keep playing over and over again. How, how cool is this? And he was um, 15 years old going to these shows. And he sent me an actual ticket stub of the Wishbone Air Show from 1972. This is just... Because he knows from my collection. I'll, I'll show you again that I collect these things. And uh, there's an actual ticket stub. One pound. And it says Wishbone Ash from Croydon Upper Stalls. Love that word stalls. I'm in the United States. We don't use stalls. But I know it from, from you guys, uh, you know, across the pond. So how cool is that? And then he sent pictures of shows that he went to. Legendary shows like the Stones at Nebworth. And um, other shows as well. There's the Stones and uh, Jethro Tull and uh, other shows. And then he, he went to see... Not only the Stones at Nebworth, um, but he saw Pink Floyd in 1975 at Nebworth. And he sent this picture, you know, and there is a rocket ship behind the stage that flew over the crowd. I mean, this is this stuff is like right up my alley. And look what he sent me. Is this so cool? He sent me the actual ticket stub of Pink Floyd at Nebworth. I mean, £2.75. How, how cool is that? I mean, that is just so great. And he paid the, the shipping from Surrey, England. I, I, I can't imagine what the hell that that is. So, um, you know, this is just just blows me away. You know, like here's... That's from this show, this Pink Floyd legendary show from Nebworth. And he sent a picture that showed Steve Miller on stage right over there. So, you know, to me, uh, talking to somebody and... Showing me pictures of them 
that they went to Nebworth. And now giving me the ticket stub because he knows that I've showed you. I, I have ticket stubs of every show that I've been. And I collect, uh, you know, I always collected the ads and the newspaper reviews. And, you know, I have books of all the concerts I've been to and all of these artists. So, you know, I guess he realizes that this is going to a good home. I'm not some dealer who's going to sell this stuff to make money. This is my passion and my love. And, you know, it's real. Unlike probably a lot of other channels out there, this I'm the real deal. And that's what I show, all physical media. So thank you so much for your amazing gift. These ticket stubs are going into... A different book that I have of ticket subs that I didn't go to these shows. But this is, like, amazing to me. You know, Wishbone Ash, I'm such a huge fan. And then Pink Floyd at Nebworth. So, and love your personal stories because that just adds so much. And then today, this is wild. i got this huge bag. I'm just going to show you this. Now, again, I, I'm low budget. This is my house. So, you know, I don't have a P.O. box or anything. Uh, sent to my house... Look at the size of this thing, and, and this came from Todd, uh, I don't know if I should give his name away, uh, over in Michigan. I mean, the fact that he spent $14.50 just in shipping costs, uh, it just blows me away. Uh, your generosity, all of your generosities, is just so humbling. And I, th I think you could tell I'm getting emotional, because I really mean it. But he sent me a bunch of really cool things. This is interesting because I think, according to this, it looks like he bought it re recently, paid for it, had it shipped to him, bought it from somebody, and and put it, left it in the packaging, bought it on eBay, I guess, and shipped it to me. Like, he bought this thing just for me. And this is a sealed copy of the Rolling Stones Voodoo Lounge Live from Giant Stadium, New Jersey. I was actually at this show. Um, and I remember this tape. It was only sold at the stadium. And it's wild. In fact, I remember the opening had a great opening. If you're familiar, I don't know if it's on YouTube, but uh, it opens up with a, a roadie in bed with a groupie. And he wakes up, and there's drugs and paraphernalia all over, and he jumps out of bed because he's late. And he's like, oh, shit, they're going to fire me. My job is so important for the Stones. I can't be late. And he gets to the concert. And he jumps around, he gets backstage, jumps on the stage, and all he's got to do is plug in, like, the guitar lead into the amp or something like that. It was just a funny gig. That's the opening of this video. And this is a tremendous tape on VHS of that show. How cool is that? So thank you so much. Now let's put that over there. And then he sent me this legendary bootleg. Uh, the Rolling Stones in concert. Is that going to get banned? God, I know it's so prudish out there. Rolling Stones in concert, 1969. This is on Berkeley Records. This is a legendary bootleg. What bootleg is this? This is a later edition. There's a vinyl bootleg of it. This is a later edition of the Stones' first bootleg and I, the third bootleg ever from... Um, the pig and that was liver than you'll ever be so that was what this is i'm just gonna go like that so the youtube doesn't ban another one of my videos but trademark equality uh this is their book on their whole history and this is uh liver than you'll ever be is a really fascinating story and there is different versions of it. And that is what that actually is. That's Liver Than You'll Ever Be, a latter-day version on Berkeley Records. Um, this is the album that caused the Rolling Stones to release Get Your Yayas Out. So this is, a, this is a really cool book if you never saw this. This is the history of trademark equality and the Swing and Pig. So I'm a big bootleg guy. That's a cool book. Um, so that's what that is. Thank you so much. And last but not least, he sent me this. And this is so damn cool. This is a picture disc bootleg vinyl album called The Rolling Stones Voodoo Lounge Alternate. Man, this is right up my alley. Voodoo Lounge is a heavily bootlegged album. I have, um, in fact, here is one right here. Voodoo Stew is a Ford CD box set. I have Voodoo Brew. 
But this is beautiful. I don't have this. And this is Voodoo, Voodoo Lounge alternate on vinyl. And I love the artwork. Uh, this would have been the artwork, by the way, in for the album if I had my way. I think this is a much better artwork than um, what they actually did. But how damn cool is this? So I got that today all in this giant package. Uh, David, we don't want this stuff to fall. So uh, just unbelievable uh, from Todd. So thank you, uh, Martin and Todd and Steve, who sent this, and Tom, and everybody who is supporting my channel. Again, I don't expect gifts. I don't expect money. I do it because this is my life. I love this. And I am now 61 years old. And I want to share my passion and my collection before I'm gone. That's the goal of my channel. So as I get emotional here, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for supporting my channel. If you... Uh, I got cut off there. If you're new to my channel, hit subscribe. Let's help the channel to grow really just so other people can discover it um, because unlike the stones box sets where i say it's more sizzle than steak meaning big production but there's not a lot of meat to it i like to think that this little alan rosenberg show and all of you that are a part of it is much more steak than sizzle i just thought of that live everything i do is live so uh i hope you agree this is a channel of steak and not sizzle. Um, anyway, I hope you have a great night. This was a very much unplanned uh, video, but I'm truly touched from everybody's generosity, including just watching my channel. It takes a lot of time and responding. That's generosity. And thank you so much. Have a wonderful night, and I will see you next time on the Alan Rosenberg Show. In fact, Sunday is a record show I'm going to be going to, and the flea market, this is the time of the year I start buying and buying, and I already got a, a new backlog of stuff that I bought that I haven't shown you, so that'll be coming up. Uh, thanks again. I'll see you next time.